Welcome to this month's show. We've come up to CCI. I'm an ambassador for the company and um, in my view they make the best clay targets in the world. We're here with Johnny Goodart and we're going to go right through the basics of making a clay target which you all shoot. We've come outside to where the raw material starts its journey and I'm going to pass you over to Johnny and he's just going to explain a little bit about where it goes and what it does. We've taken two uh, raw materials, we've taken pitch and chalk. Uh, the pitch comes in liquid form uh, and the chalk obviously comes in, in, in powder form. Uh, and they are fed by the lorries into these machines out here and into the silos there. We'll go into the fact in a minute where the, we'll show you where they are mixed uh, and they become uh, the base of a clay of a clay pigeon. Uh, to put it into context, when we're busy, uh, we'll run through about 80 tons of material a day here, uh, making just a little over three quarters of a million clays a day. So we need to be fairly efficient about how we uh, how we, we, we transact this, and we can't spend forever getting it off the lorry. So on a busy day, you know, we're going to get four lorries in here dropping off raw materials, which means I also need four lorries leaving here with finished products. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, absolutely. Uh, so the implication is that during the week, um, we're probably going to ship out um, you know, up to three million clays a day, and at the weekend we make up and we refill the stock. So we've actually got enough for, for, the, for the week. And this morning we saw um, uh, well, a load two, lorry, of, two lorries leave this morning and a container to New Zealand. So, yeah. so um, you know, it's a fairly, um, um, it's a fairly intense process 24-7. And, you know, we, I think, uh, certainly think that we're the only people that run 24-7. People don't realise how quickly these things can be made. So, 5p bit. And a 1p bit. We once had a bloke say, oh, I found a 5p coin in my clay. Do I win something? I said, no, but I want the 5p back though. <laughs> so, what, what this is going to show is that the clay takes about 23 seconds to be to be set. So I put those in 23 seconds ago and they come out and they're still warm to touch. Yeah. But they're not, but they're set. Yeah. Absolutely. There's no, there's no resin. They're set, yeah, they're yeah. hard as nails, okay? So, I'd like to give that one to you, and that, no. one, and that one to Kate. Because oh. she's five times more valuable. Yeah. And just see which one happens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, I'm sure that later on, when they're going, just about to go into the box, they're going to be checked visually, how do you check the density of each target, etc., etc., when when you're, um, you know, in production as much as you are? Okay. Well, you know, as we explained, you know, we we use um, twelve kilos of material a minute per furnace, twenty four seven. There's a constant four mixing. Furnaces. Yeah, four furnaces in the summertime is definitely four, but but we. But it's a continuous mixing process, and so therefore you need to take a snapshot in it at some point in the process. And we do this uh, with this machine here, and it tells us exactly what the ratio of chalk to pitch is, and that's right. quite a crucial number. Yeah. Uh, and it allows us to take a spot check or a, a photographic moment in time. Yeah. Every so often, and we do it. We 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 measure it every every so often. It's the same measurement every day. Uh, which then allows us to know that that mix is ostensibly is a good mix. Yeah. Now, if we did it every every hour or every half an hour, it may not be enough. You know, but we do it very regularly, and as soon as that mix goes one way or the other, which then leads to either larger number of no birds, or you know, breakages in the trap, or you hit it and you get a pellet through it, or you know, yeah, 
you know, lots of new rules. There, there's lots of new rules, and you know, as we said earlier on, you know, you want to make, you really want to make this one way. You want to transport it another way. You want to, you know, and then finally, when you put it in the trap, it needs to be another mix. But yeah. we need to find a, a line. I think you know, CCI over the years have found that line. And so this machine, as simple as it is, I can tell you to within 0.0001% what the mix is. That's how accurate it is. So, you know, we've got a fairly high tolerance within that. You know, we can we can work to within a few thousands. Okay, time. so 0.0001 percent of each target in uh, in of each layman's furnace, yeah. uh, each furnace. But in layman's terms, what would be the percentage before the property of the target changes? Uh, it's quite tolerable, to be honest. I mean, probably two percent either way. Two percent. Yeah. So I mean, you know, we're, but that's what I'm trying no, to tell you. So you can but measure we're it. measuring it down to the smallest possible denominator, so we know where we are. Yeah. But we've got a fairly large window. Tolerance either side. And you know, the boys have a fairly narrow window. Don't tell them. We've actually got a slightly larger window than that commercially. But the boys, have, I've narrowed the boys down to a very small window. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as it triggers, then they start resolving the issue. Yeah. yeah. And if there are clays coming off the line we're not happy with, uh, and that they don't fit to the, the, the required standard, we quarantine them. Yeah. And we then go through them. We'll density check every box we have to, yeah. to know that there'll be a cutoff point. You'll tell it very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and if we're still unhappy with it, we'll put it back through the recycling process, and we'll start the whole thing all over again. Because if it's out by three percent here. Yeah. By the time you put in the recycling, it's going to be melted down, you know, yeah. one to be not even one percent of what we put through the machine. Yeah. Perfect. But it just goes to show why the product is so good. Well, you know, George, it's you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, clay pigeons is a, it's a dirty process, and what we're trying to do is bring it slightly in line with the 21st century. Yeah. Uh, through the <coughs> checkway systems that we've got in place, through the uh, ability to read our mix perfectly, to um, you know, trying to get out and, and show that we actually do we do a reasonably good job. Yeah. And you're doing it. Right, let's go up and have a look at the um, the drying area. We've run 35 meters from, since we came out of the last paint machine, yeah. and as you can see, the leading edge and some of the top is already dry, uh, and we're only uh, about a third of the way through the drying process. Yeah. So what it tells us is that the is that the clay pigeon, the heat, the residual heat in the clay pigeon from manufacturing does most of the drying. So what we'll do is we'll pop down uh, and we'll see what they're like at the other end, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Here we are, George. We were up in that corner, if you remember, yeah. watching the clay's been dried. Um, they are ostensibly dry, but I'll show you where it's important, where it's not important. The important edge to get dry, yeah, is this bottom flat edge. Rather than the, rather in here, there's, ah, no, there's right. no contact there at oh, all. Absolutely. Okay. And the other edge is this one here. That's the inner place, which is when you stack the clay. When you were packing the back, yes. that, you get the integral strength from these two shoulders. We were talking about this earlier on. Do you remember? So yeah, yeah. The, the strength of the clay landing uh, on the plate, the, the the drive belt line, and the integrity of it there, and how strong we make the corner, and the combination of the two. As you can see, everything's touching in here designed accordingly to take the weight of a ton of clay pigeons. I mean, it's a huge weight yeah. on such a fragile piece of kit. But then you get the you get the air gaps in here. Yeah. yeah. Which allows you, I mean, that's how you uh, break the uh, yeah, breathe. Exactly. CCI does operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Orange rabbits, black rabbits, approximately 360 days of the year. Vivid standards, black standards. The reason is it's a hot process, as, you, as you've seen, and consequently to turn anything off then takes quite a lot of time for it to warm back up again and get things heated up again. We do uh, a magenta or a pink. Of course, we do have to do essential maintenance, so that's why it's not 365 days of the year. We need to have five days where we can do some maintenance on some of the hot parts of the factory. We take in, you know, up to a million boxes a year to pack our clays in. We employ approximately 50 people, and so yeah, you know, they're working on a four-on, four-off shift pattern day and night, so I sometimes lay, at, lay in bed at night and I'm thinking to myself, you know, wake up, it's three o'clock in the morning and we're still making clay pigeons. You know, it's, it's Easter, it's bank holidays, we're still making clay pigeons. And, um, you know, we're quite proud of that fact. It's over 120 million a year usually. And, um, you know, they're big, big numbers. You know, one a second, 
it doesn't take very long for us to, you know, really fill up the warehouse. It doesn't, equally, it doesn't take us very long to sell them as well. So, you know, we're just constantly, constantly making clay pigeons, and it's what we do, and we do like to think we do it well. He's quite good like that, George. We're going to do a little, little masterclass of my own with George this time. So, um, we're going to teach him how to pack a box of clays efficiently and to check for any, uh, any defects, which is what my boys do 24 7. Uh, and it's, uh, if he gets it wrong, he'll find some clays coming down the table and pretty quickly. Okay, well that's been a minute and 20 seconds. Uh, and they've been made slightly quicker, this chat, can we? Can I just say, old boy, that I don't intend making this for you. Oh, really? <laughs> and I appreciate that this precise moment I'm not going to Oh, that's a dangerous, uh, now that's really dangerous now. Did you, how many did you move? Yeah, you see, now you're guessing how many you've got left, aren't you? No. Hey! I'm going to go for 100. I'm going to go for 142 seconds, which is fine. You know what? For a novice, it's perfect. Each box gets date stamped and packer stamped, so if there's an issue with them, we've got some traceability in the factory uh, when they were made, by which shift leader, and who packed them. So somewhere along the line, we can work out what's gone wrong. Can I just say that whilst packing them was an enjoyable experience. You've done it. I would rather break them than pack them. <laughs> well, actually, you did a pretty good job breaking the box anyway, to be honest. Right, OK. So thank you, Peter. You've just seen us um, loading up a 20-foot container to go to New Zealand. Um, we're about to shove on um, one of the pneumatic traps. Uh, and with our recent tie-up with pneumatic, uh, it's quite a convenient route to market because it saves them sending a trap individually Absolutely. and it allows us just to pop it on the box here which we're going to have a look at as we put it on. Where, uh, where, where is it going in New Zealand? Uh, it's going to our agent. We have a mutual agent down there um, who buys our clays and buys the pneumatic traps. So it's, uh, it's a, it's a one-shop fits all really. Great tire. So we'll get Sean to load this up now. Sean! One of the things you want to stop at sea is any, is any movement, free movement of the boxes within the, within the container. Um, and you know, Sean's been with us for 20, our warehouse has been here for 22 years now. And as he said to George this morning, he's done a couple of these. Well, I know from many years of uh, doing them, it's just under 21 pallets, so uh, it's which works out about 1,300 boxes. And that is how many clays? About 200,000, somewhere around about that. <laughs> 